plan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah what, what I did at the beginning, I befriended the leader. I found out who he was. If you can befriend the leader, that's important. Here's how I did it. He owned a war surplus store. You know what that is? World War II, they, the government sold surplus of equipment. And I used to buy a lot of scientific stuff, lenses and optical devices from him. So he said, what do you do with that stuff? So I said, well, I have a lab. He said, gee, uh, what I said, why don't you come out and I'll show you. And he liked what he saw. He saw things he never saw before. So he says, you're smart. You know, this is what he said. Yeah. So he said, would you mind coming down to a clan meeting and tell them what you're working on? I said, Lou, his name was Lou Merwin. They would never listen to me. He said, don't worry about that. I'll get them to listen to you. Southern accent. <laughs> because what you say is important. I said, Lou, do you agree with what I say? He says, I'm not smart enough to understand everything you say, but what you say makes a lot of sense. I said, well, what if they don't want to listen? He said, I'll get them to listen to you. So he said, I want you guys to listen to this jock. He got a lot of good ideas. So what I did is I took my little girl when she was about two years old. I put a cigarette in her mouth, and I used a gun and a mirror at 40 feet. I split the cigarette near her mouth. So Lou Merlin watched that, and he said, you the best shot I ever saw. He said, but I wouldn't do that with my own kid. He said, you might miss and hurt her. So I said, no, I feel very confident. I really didn't do that with my own kid. I cut the cigarette with a razor blade, and I put a hairpin in it, and when she rolled her lips a certain way, the hairpin blew tobacco all over the place when I fired a blank. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. But Lou said, you the best shot I ever saw. He, that impressed him. Will you come on down to the clan meeting and talk about guns and how to shoot? You know? So I did that. You know, I didn't know what rifling was, how it spun the bullet, and centrifugal force kept the bullet on course. I talked a lot about guns and weapons because they were interested in that. Then after that, there was a time Lou said, I wanted to tell him the way you think. So uh, I showed him a lot of stuff and it's scratching their heads, you know. A lot of them are very uneducated people who don't know nothing about technology <coughs> except guns, automobiles, and motors, electric motors. They knew that, but they didn't know enough about society, anthropology, human behavior. So I began to fill them in. I used to train dogs and animals, dogs mostly to lead the blind. When I was a kid, they walked with a white stick. So I used to train dogs to take them down the street, you know, and stop when there's a red light. Dogs can't see color, but they see shades. Yeah. So I learned how to do that. But a sweet old lady walked over and touched my, one of my dogs and said, what a nice, kind dog. You know, and I said, no, ma'am, I could have trained that dog to tear soldiers to pieces. Mm -hmm. I trained it to lead the blind. Dogs are neither good nor bad. Depends on the way they're brought up. Do you understand that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. She says, I never thought of it that way. I said, that's the way it is. And she got that right away. So then, I, as a kid, I said, how do you know you can change people? Yes. You have I a question? Back to the, the What's that? Clan thing. Yes. So the clan, uh, I said to Lou, uh, you can look at people and tell us all about them right away. And you don't even know them. He said, I'm born that way. That's a natural gift. So I said, will you teach us how to do that? He says, Jacques, I didn't think I can teach you anything. Well, I'd be delighted to teach you how I do that. I said, very good, Lou. So he said, come on down to the next clan meeting, and I'll work on how you can tell what people are like without knowing them. So I figured I brought my own equipment down, and I projected an image on the wall, on the screen, of a guy with a white mustache and gray hair, good-looking guy. And I said, Lou, tell us all you can about him. I says, I know you don't know who he is. He says, no, I don't. But I'll tell you one thing, he's a war veteran. He's a good American and a good Christian. He was very white. He looked respectable, yeah. 
and Lou was projecting his own values. Mm -hmm. And when he got through, I said, Lou, is there anything else you can add to it? He said, no, that pretty much sums it up. So then I pulled the bottom of the picture out, which I got in the post office. So wanted by the FBI for subversive activity against the United States. Huh. Mm -hmm. And the, the 30 members of the Klan were laughing at Lou for mm -hmm. the first time. So I said, you guys shut your mouth. Lou goofed up this time. We all make mistakes, don't we? So don't get angry at him. He's doing his best. Yeah. And because if I taught him,